The landscape of Australian aerial warfare is currently undergoing its most significant transformation since the introduction of the jet engine. As the strategic environment in the Indo-Pacific becomes increasingly complex, the Royal Australian Air Force is transitioning from a traditional force centered on expensive, crude platforms to an integrated network of autonomous systems. At the heart of this shift is the concept of collaborative combat aircraft, or loyal wingmen, designed to fly alongside crude fighters like the Lockheed Martin F-35A Lightning II and the Boeing E-7A Wedgetail. Two primary contenders have emerged to define this future. The Boeing MQ-28A Ghost Bat, a homegrown pioneer with a decade of development, and the Anduril Fury, a fast-moving disruptor born from the rapid innovation culture of the technology sector. This competition represents more than just a choice between two airframes. It is a fundamental debate over how Australia should build, fund, and deploy air power in the 21st century. The Boeing MQ-28A Ghost Bat holds a unique position in the Australian national consciousness as the first military aircraft to be designed and manufactured in Australia in more than 50 years. This program, which began as the Loyal Wingman Project, has recently reached a historic milestone that cements its status as a mature combat asset. In December 2025, the Royal Australian Air Force and Boeing successfully conducted a live-fire mission at the Woomera Test Range in South Australia. During this trial, an MQ-28A Ghost Bat engaged and destroyed an uncrewed aerial target using a Raytheon AIM-120 advanced medium-range air-to-air missile. This achievement was not merely a technical success. It was a world-first demonstration of an autonomous platform executing an end-to-end -end combat engagement under the oversight of a crewed aircraft, in this case, an E-7A Wedgetail. The success of Trial Karela has validated the Australian government's massive investment, which now totals approximately 1 billion 400 million Australian dollars for the current development phase. The Albanese government recently announced an additional investment of 754 million Australian dollars, specifically for Boeing Defence Australia, to advance the Ghost Bat program. This funding tranche includes the production of six Block II aircraft and, perhaps most importantly, the development of an enhanced Block III prototype. The Block III iteration is expected to address one of the most critical requirements for modern stealth operations, an internal weapons bay. By moving ordnance inside the fuselage, the Ghost Bat will significantly reduce its radar cross-section, allowing it to penetrate contested environments that would be too dangerous for less stealthy platforms. This evolution reflects a design philosophy that prioritizes high-end capability and survivability, essentially creating a mini-fighter that can perform almost any mission its crude counterparts can, but at a fraction of the human risk. While Boeing represents the established sovereign capability, Anduril Industries has rapidly emerged as a formidable challenger with its Fury platform. Anduril's approach is rooted in the belief that software, not hardware, should dictate the pace of modern warfare. The Fury, known technically as the YFQ-44A, made its international debut at the Avalon Australian International Air Show in 2025 following a remarkable development cycle. The aircraft went from a clean sheet design to its first semi-autonomous flight in just 556 days. For an industry accustomed to decades-long procurement cycles, this speed is revolutionary. 
Anderil's philosophy centers on affordable mass and attritability, the idea that aircraft should be cheap enough to be lost in combat without causing a strategic or financial crisis for the nation. The Fury is powered by the Lattice for Mission Autonomy software, an open architecture operating system that Anderil has already begun trialing with the Royal Australian Air Force at Base Darwin for counter-drone operations. Unlike the Ghost Bat, which is being built in a bespoke aerospace precinct in Wellcamp, Queensland, the Fury is designed for hyperscale producibility. Anduril leverages commercial components, such as the Williams FJ44 turbofan engine, typically found in business jets, to keep costs low and supply chains resilient. By focusing on a software-first architecture, Anduril argues that the Fury can be updated as easily as a smartphone. Allowing the Royal Australian Air Force to adapt to new electronic warfare threats or mission requirements in weeks rather than years. The choice between these two platforms forces Australian defense planners to balance sovereign pride against economic pragmatism. The GhostBat program has already integrated over 200 Australian suppliers, ensuring that 70% of the government's investment remains within the local economy. This creates a high-tech industrial base that Australia has lacked for decades. However, the unit cost of an MQ-28A is estimated to be between 10 million and 15 million Australian dollars once full production begins. While this is significantly cheaper than a 90 million dollar F-35A, it is still a substantial investment for a platform that is intended to be expendable. In contrast, Anduril's Fury aims for an even lower price point by sacrificing some of the exquisite, exquisite multi-mission capabilities of the Ghost Bat in favor of raw numbers. Strategic autonomy is a recurring theme in Australian defense discourse, especially within the context of the AUKUS partnership. The Ghost Bat is a quintessentially Australian project, yet its success may ultimately depend on its ability to be exported, particularly to the United States Air Force. Although the United States has participated in testing the Ghost Bat, it is also funding its own collaborative combat aircraft program, where Anduril and General Atomics were recently selected for the first development increment. This creates a complex dynamic where Australia's sovereign platform must compete globally against the very companies now setting up shop on Australian soil. Anduril's recent opening of a major undersea surveillance factory in Sydney demonstrates their commitment to becoming a dual national company, blurring the lines between a foreign contractor and a local manufacturer. For the Australian taxpayer, the debate often centers on the value for money of these autonomous systems. With the government planning to spend more than 10 billion Australian dollars on uncrewed systems over the next decade, there is intense scrutiny on whether these drones will actually deliver the promised asymmetric advantage. The Ghost Bat's recent missile test has gone a long way in proving that it is a lethal asset rather than just a high-tech surveillance tool. However, the logistical challenge of maintaining a fleet of 10 ghost bats by 2030, as currently planned, is significant. If a conflict were to occur, Australia would need hundreds, not dozens, of these aircraft to offset the numerical superiority of a major power. This is where the Anduril model of mass production becomes highly attractive to those worried about a long war of attrition. Ultimately, the future of the Royal Australian Air Force may not involve choosing one aircraft over the other, 
but rather integrating both into a tiered family of systems. The MQ-28A Ghost Bat could serve as the high-end, survivable quarterback for autonomous formations, utilizing its advanced sensors and internal weapons bay to lead the way. Meanwhile, more affordable platforms like the Fury could provide the necessary bulk, acting as decoys, sensor nodes, or additional missile magazines to overwhelm enemy defenses. This hybrid approach would allow Australia to maintain its sovereign industrial capabilities, while also benefiting from the rapid innovation and lower costs of the technology-led defense sector. As the Royal Australian Air Force prepares to receive its first three operational Block II Ghost Bats by the end of 2026, the competition with Andrew will only intensify. The successful engagement of an aerial target in December has given Boeing the lead in terms of proven lethality. But the speed to capability demonstrated by Andro remains a potent threat to traditional procurement models. In the coming years, the ability of these platforms to work together, governed by a common Australian-controlled autonomous architecture, will be the true measure of success. For a nation that has long relied on buying foreign technology, the sight of Australian-designed drones leading the charge in the Pacific represents a profound shift in national defense strategy and a bold statement of technological sovereignty.